What is all that noise? Yo, man. Easy on my glass. Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Eric and today I've got something very special to install on the Model 3. I am installing the Hand Show Power Frunk. If you haven't seen my other video where I installed the Power Trunk, it's uh, pretty detailed as far as what all needs to be done but this mod is absolutely the best i love this i use it every time i use the car i'm constantly using the trunk getting things in and out whether it's just grocery shopping or throwing my my laptop bag in while i'm going to work and then just to be able to come out and close it and walk away has been awesome so if you're planning on doing any of these installations yourself, just be prepared that the trunk is a lot more difficult and it'll take you anywhere from three to five hours where the frunk is gonna be a lot more simple. There's not a lot involved as far as wiring things because everything is contained in the front. You don't have to run any wires through the inside of the car or anything like that. So it only takes about one to two hours to do the frunk. So the first thing you want to do is just take everything out of your frunk area. If you've got any carpeting, you'll want to remove that. I've got this mat. This actually came from Tesla. It's made by WeatherTech. Um, really good quality. I recommend getting some sort of a front trunk uh, type of mat. Here's the original carpet because mine uh, shipped with carpet because this was the premium interior. So you'll just want to make sure you remove everything out of the way. The next thing we're going to do is remove this uh, front area here. Move this out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the air intake as well, uh, just because I'm going to be routing some wires under that. That just lifts off. And the next thing you're going to do is remove the seven bolts that hold this shell down in here. And I believe these are going to be a 10 millimeter. front latch piece here, grab it from the bottom, and does have a wire connector. Disconnect that, and it's got two bolts right here. Okay, so now that all the bolts have been removed, everything else is just held in by clips. So you can just start prying away at the sides and you'll hear it unpopping out of those clips. And now you can just move this out of the way.
All right, and here's a good look of your area where the frunk is removed. You see you've got your motor down there. Uh, this is a dual motor car, so it's got a motor up front. Got the built-in differential up there with your um, axles going into it. It's pretty cool stuff. So just removing this whole area, that we're a quarter of the way done with the whole job. So we just really need to replace the struts, then put uh, the new latch equipment here with the motor. Um, we need to route the emergency pull cable out through here, and then just run everything up here, connect it to the battery, plug everything in, put everything back together, and we're done. So the next thing you're gonna do is remove the struts. And these are easy. They're just like the ones I did on the rear of the car where you get like a little flathead screwdriver and you pry right in there. You just push this down and kind of press or twist it to where this part pops off. This is just a little cover on the side and it goes the same way on the bottom. So you just remove those and they come right off. Try this one off first. There you go. Now with this move down, it just makes it easier to get down into this bottom area here. Try the bottom one off. There. Comes right off. The new one is even easier to put on. Just make sure the cable's going on the bottom section, and that just pops in. You just add pressure. You'll hear it click into place. From here, you rotate this around to fit the ball. And we're done. We repeat on the opposite side. So the next thing you're going to do is remove this spring right here. The kit comes with a new spring and as you can see it is a smaller narrower spring so it's going to be an easier latch. If you don't want to replace this whole system with the power one and you just want to make it close softer, you can replace the spring and that'll make it easier to close. When you push down on it, it'll just latch real easy. So that's just a little tip, but this does come with the kit, so we're going to replace this with this one. Now before we replace this spring, we are going to install the little motor that does the soft close of the latch. Um, I'm going to do my best to just try to find a place down here somewhere and it's not a very smooth surface to put a lot of double-sided tape but the kit does come with this 3M double-sided tape that I'm going to put here and just attach it down there somewhere. I did make sure I used an alcohol wipe to clean off all dirt and dust just so this will adhere much easier down here. So I'm just going to place this down out of the way, right around here. That way I can route the latching mechanism up over here. Now for the latch, there is one other bolt we're going to remove, which is this one right here that will allow us to attach this mechanism to here. This is also a 10 millimeter. OK, 
Okay, so you're gonna orientate this to where this little barb at the end here slides into this little groove and then the bolt will hold the other end. Don't worry about this one just yet. And now this little slit here slides over the end of the little arm that is what locks this down. Now we can take the new spring and place it over that end and we just stretch it up to around here. The kit does come with zip ties so you can move this cable and tie it down. This whole area here is a foam rubber. It pushes in, it's squishy, so you can just kind of push it back like this. It's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, so now that the latch is on, looks like that. The other end of the motor has this piece here. This is your emergency release. Uh, this will only work if you lose power to the car. Um, if the unit has power to it, this will not work. This is only for emergency purposes and you can route it out through this way right here. Um, and basically it's just a safety feature. It keeps you from, uh, let's say someone wants to steal whatever's in your frunk. They can't just pop your frunk by opening this little port and pulling the emergency cable because your car will have power to it. Uh, this, will, this part will be disabled. But if you were to ever lose power and you have no power at all, complete dead battery, and you need to get into your frunk, this is how you do it. You pop this open and you pull this, this cable here to release the frunk when there's no power. So to release this, you just need to push on this corner here. There is a little tab that right there that will allow it to go in and this side pops out here. Take your pry tool and now this pulls out like this. So there is no clear way of just routing this straight out through the bumper here. You do have to kind of feel your way around this area to get it to go in. So like I said, just do the best you can to, to use your sense of feel with your hand, get this to push through. Just like that. So if you were to ever lose power to your car and you need to get into your frunk and you don't have this kit with this emergency release, then this is your positive and negative that you can connect a battery to, to pop the frunk. I've heard that there's actually enough power in a little nine volt battery that you can just put these to the nine volt and it'll just release enough energy to, to pop the frunk. But uh, that's just something you can play around with. This is how you do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape up the one that's attached to the cover. This one doesn't really matter because this will just fall down in there and it's attached to this one a little further back. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach these like this and that way once this pops off, this will always be right here next to it available. Okay, with this taped up, now you can just pull all this back, push it down into the front bumper area. And just remember the orientation of this cap. 
the little notch goes up on this side here and it just pops in like that. All right, now for the fun part. We gotta install this wiring harness and uh, it's, this isn't hard at all. It's just you have to pay attention to where everything's going and uh, it'll all make sense because all the things uh, that you need to clip into this only fit into one place. So it's not that confusing. It's just you gotta know where to look to, to find what side connects into what. All right, so once you unravel the uh, cabling here, you'll see this end here with the white plug and the red plug. This end goes to your control module, which we're going to place somewhere around this area here. That all comes with the kit. So the opposite end is where it gets a little confusing, but I'll explain all that to you because it's really not that bad. So you got these jumbled messes here. But if you see, they're color-coded. You've got this yellow one, a white one, and a blue one. So let's take a look at each one. Because there's really three spots that these go to. You've got this release right here on the latch. That's the first one. The second one actually connects here. It's a debugging uh, plug that this is what uh, connects to the push button that illuminates that uh, will open the frunk from the inside. So we're gonna start off by adjusting it with the debugging uh, attached, but once it's working and we've got it set up how we like it, you can actually disconnect the debug and put the original cable back into the button uh, that came with the car. The last one is going to be this guy right here, we're gonna unplug that. And that's where this other one goes. And I'll show you which color code and all that goes where. But those are the three spots. Here, just right here, right here, and right there. And then the opposite end plugs into the control module that we'll put over here somewhere. And the only other wire that you would have to run is the power and ground wires, and that's it. All right, so I'm just looking at this plug here, trying to see where you would release it. Yeah, there's a little squeeze thing there. So this is that. And if you actually look, you'll see, let's see if that one gonna be, not gonna be the yellow. Okay, so if you look, the blue wire has an attachment that looks identical to the one we just unplugged. So we're gonna put the opposite one that doesn't look like the one we unplugged into that one that we just unplugged. And the one that looks identical to what we just unplugged, we're gonna put it in its place where we just unplugged the other one. Next, the white one goes here, so we can just, let's see, clip that in like that, and we can use this one to plug into the button when we're ready to do that. So this one's ready here. The last one is the yellow one, and that's going to go down under here. It's labeled motor plug. So. Let me go ahead and remove that one and we'll plug this one in. All right, so the last plug is this motor plug. We're just gonna lift this little clip up and push it out like that. Then we'll take the yellow wire and we're going to insert what we just removed into one end of the clip like that and this other one we're going to put back where we found uh, 
It is kind of tight fitting back in here. Okay, so that's all clipped into place. Everything's connected here. That's it. All right, so I've got everything connected here. You've got the blue wire over here and the white wire in the middle and the yellow wire going over to the side here. Now you just take the opposite end, which is gonna look like this, and we can just kind of route it over here somewhere for in the time being. Put it right there. There's your strut one. We're gonna have another one here. So really now we've done the majority of the job. All we really need to do is tidy things up a little bit of cable management to run these cables uh, across through here and around through here. Uh, the kit does come with quite a few zip ties, so you can kind of zip tie them to other wiring looms just to kind of keep it neat looking and out of the way. But yeah, this is about it. All right, so I'm just doing a little bit of cleaning up here. Hand show does uh, recommend that you cut into this little foam rubber area here just to have this a little bit flush. So what I'm gonna do is take a straight knife here and kind of cut at a diagonal so there's a flap that kind of pushes that way. Okay. All right, so now we can just kind of start using some zip ties to tidy things up. This is gonna be the other end of the motor that we just uh, attached at the bottom. And this also routes up along the side. Everything's gonna plug into that control module. So for the front strut areas, we wanna route this over to this other end, but we need to, we don't want to just lay it on top. I want to route it underneath this, this rubber. Um, let me see if I can just, yeah, you could remove this clip, but I think you can just slide it through. I think that's going to be the easiest thing. Yeah, this is pretty flexible. Here, we can just route it to the other side. So now the only other wiring that's left is the power wire, which is combined with your ground. So I'll show you where you need to ground it and how to plug this in. This also comes with a fuse in line, just like the one from the power trunk. So we're gonna connect it the same way and this is gonna be super easy, guys. So we're gonna loosen this power connection first. You don't have to get crazy with how tight it is. Just gonna try to get another one of these back behind there. Like I said in my previous videos, I usually like to have the bottom part of the connection at the bottom just so you can fit your cover back on top.
Right, the next thing you want to do is find the ground. You'll see there's a couple spots here where they have grounded other wiring harnesses. So you just really want to just reuse whatever they're using. So I'm going to loosen this one up. Everything's been so far a 10 millimeter. You just want to loosen it just enough to where you can fit this behind it. Just slide it into place. Like that. Alright, now that we have our ground, the purple plug goes into your control module. We've already got the ground. The red other end clips in to your power. All right, that just clips in like that. Now we just need to tie up these wires and plug in our control module. Okay, so this is your control module. You'll see everything is color coded, makes it very easy, plug and play. Uh, one thing different about this um, installation as opposed to the trunk is Handshow is recommending that once you plug everything into this, that you put it back in this static uh, protective bag and install it that way. So I'll go ahead and try that and we'll see how that turns out for us. So white goes into the white and the blues go together. They only fit one way, so it's super easy. So all we have left is the power. Let's see anything else here? This red one. This goes to the uh, the the uh, speaker. So I'll go ahead and before I connect the power, let me connect the the speaker. You use the speaker to select the speed of the opening. power so everything is looking good so far all right so I just put the uh, static bag back over it and I think that's just really to keep moisture and things out because it is under the hood where you know the car can get water and moisture up underneath so I'm gonna just find a way to attach this control module here and do some more cable tucking and then I'll put the, the bin back in place and we'll be good to go. All right, so I just put this back in. I have not bolted anything down yet just in case I need to get back underneath to, to do anything or make any adjustments. Uh, but I just set the tub in, put this in place. I did just try closing it just now and it uh, wasn't closing all the way so I made some adjustments and let me just show you where you need to do that. So this bolt right here that we originally removed to put the bracket on, you're going to loosen that one and you're going to loosen this one over here and then this whole module can either lower or raise up and you're just going to have to mess around with that to get it to a certain height to where when it does close down and latches down, 
that everything is level. So let me go ahead and test it out again. It is on the slowest setting, so that's why it's closing kind of slow. And you see it does have the soft close. So I'm just kind of going around here and feeling, feels pretty good. So probably just gonna leave it at that. All right, since everything is pretty much working, I'm gonna go ahead and start bolting down uh, this whole tub area. And at least we'll have that part uh, taken care of. Start these in uh, with my fingers first so I don't cross thread anything. Especially if you're using power tools, always use your fingers first. Something else I would recommend is start them all with your fingers and do all of them before you start, you know, tightening these down really hard because what if you need to make some more adjustments to kind of move it back and around to make the other bolts fit. You may not be able to fit some of these other bolts into place here. So just wait until they're all in finger threaded before you start torquing them down. So before I put this back on the latch cover here, we're going to program it to how fast we want it to come down. The way you do that is you hold this button down until you hear it beep, and then it'll give you a bunch of other beeps, and you just have to count how fast the beeps are to determine how fast you want it to go. And I believe uh, one beep is the slowest and five beeps is the fastest. So let's go ahead and start that process. First speed. All right, I'm letting go off that one. Let's test how fast that one goes. All right. All right, so now that that is programmed, this plug, this diagnostic plug, and install the original one again in its place. And we'll just tuck this one back down into this area here where it's out of the way. We're done. Okay, so now that we have it installed, we can open the prong by using the app. We can also close the prong by pressing the same button.
We can also open the front by the button on the screen. However, if you pay attention, it is now grayed out. We cannot close the front from the screen. So the way you close the front, which is I'm actually fine with, is you push the button. So push the button. Because if you think about it, why are you opening in the front in the first place? It's usually because you're either going to put something in it or take something out of it. So you're already standing here anyways, just push the button to close it. So that's all there is to it, guys. I hope you found this useful. Um, this job was so much easier than doing the trunk. So if you need to do the trunk, if you're not comfortable with hands-on type of work, then you may wanna hire somebody local to you to, to do it for you. The frunk though, I think it's a DIY project that anyone with basic hand tools can do because everything's just localized to the front tub area. You don't have to route anything through the cabin or any other routing. It's all there underneath the little tub area. And if you've been on the fence about ordering one of these kits, this is the weekend to do it because Handshow has offered me an extra discount for you guys, 22% off only for Black Friday through Cyber Monday weekend. After Cyber Monday, the discount will still be there, but it'll drop down to 10% off. So if you've been on the fence, this is the time to order, guys. I'll put the link and the coupon below. Let me know if you have any questions regarding that. And if you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button. If you wanna see me do more things to my car, please consider subscribing. We'll take that journey together. I'll see you guys real soon. Bye-bye.